Stop recording. Check. Checkbox. OBS 29.1.3. Profile. I Untitled. Believe Scenes. We Discord. Live. Finder. We Focus right control 2. Voice over utility. Focus right control 2. Focus right control. Add favorite. Pop up button. Has alternate items. So, yeah. All right. I think you're in your sound source window there. Say what? I think you're in your sound source window there. Mm. Playback 1, 2. Group. Playback 5, 6. Uh, group. No. Playback 3, 4. Group. Let's analog 2. Navigation bar. Group. In navigate mixer. On. Input. Inputs. Off. Toggle button. On. Analog 1. Line input. On. What was that? Inputs. Group. Um, did the notification go live? Mm, I don't have any. Ops. Really? OBS Studio. OBS 29.1.3. Exit button. Audio mixer. AD menu button. Property. Remove. Add menu button. Open scene. Remove button. Add button. Settings button. Studio mode. Uncheck. Configure virtual camera. Start virtual transition property. Remove configure. Add configurable. Pause recording. Uncheck. Stop recording. 300. Duration. I mean, Auto stop. No action available. Check. check. Stop streaming. Check. Checkbox. Oh. Yeah. This says thing. we're streaming. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Think yeah. you're going live and then you're not live. And then you think you're not live and you're. And everyone's not. probably watching this recording right now going, of course you're live. What are you talking about? Oh, man. Auto stop. Nope. Stop streaming. Check. Checkbox. Our live stream is being hidden. It's being hidden, eh? All right. Oh, I think we have confirmation of being live. So hello if anyone's tuning in. Um... As always, with live stream, fast forward for the first 30 seconds. But yeah, we're going to talk about the accessibility of the Focusrite Control 2 app, which is the app that controls the Focusrite 4th Gen Scarlet interfaces that is made up of this Scarlet Solo, Scarlet uh, 2i2, and Scarlet 4i4, as it stands today. And yeah, I'm, I'm using a Scarlet 4i4, which has four inputs and four outputs. That's two mic pre's and... Uh, well, two mic pre slash line inputs slash instrument inputs on the front panel. And then on the back panel, you're going to have uh, input three, four, outputs one, two, and output three, four. Um, the front panel has knobs for your input gain for each of the two inputs on the front. The rear input three, four does not have any controls. So it's just like a standard line input that um, you're just going to have to adjust the volume from the unit going into it or uh, in the DAW. Um, and then you also have some features that we're going to talk about and all these features have buttons on the front panel of the unit as well. And if you have focus right control open, when you adjust the knob or those buttons, it will speak the, uh, the values um, that they're set to. Um, there's also a big knob for monitor. That's if you're using like outputs one, two, three speakers, studio monitors, stuff like that. And then you have a headphone jack on the front with a volume control for the headphones as well. So. That's pretty much the layout of the unit. Um, Izzy is here with me, and uh, he's going to want to explore this because he's considering getting a Scarlet. He's not seen the new interface yet, the new uh, software yet. Uh, you have a Claret, right, Izzy? Uh, I do, yeah. First gen Claret Thunderbolt, which that software has become somewhat accessible, like the, the older Scarlets and the uh, Claret and Claret Plus software has become somewhat accessible, but he wants to kind of check out what's going on with the, uh, the fourth gen Scarlet's, um, to increase system volume, uh, s s see if we can tempt him to separate himself from some of his money. Would that be a fair assessment? Something like that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to hand you the keyboard and you can uh, check this out. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, Okay. Combo box. Stop streaming. Check. Checkbox. Focus right control 2. Focus right control. Hide others. Command tab into that. Navigation bar. Group. And VO home to go to the top. So we have a navigation bar up here. Let's go ahead and interact with this. In navigation bar. Group. Two items. Inputs on. Toggle button. Mixer off. Toggle button. Okay. So it's your inputs. And, and your essentially mixer. your outputs, your a.k.a. Outputs. mixer. Yeah. So. Auto navigation bar. Group. If we view right from here, more options. Pop up button. Have a more options button, and I think this is access preferences and give feedback and all that. Preferences. Check for updates. Ellipses. Give feedback. Yeah. So. Window ahead. sharing session button. Button. Obs. Focus right. Focus right. Control. Hit escape. And I find that I have to um, do command tab and the command shift tab 
Well, let's just focus right again. Otherwise, it's, that it's is just because we're streaming. Oh, okay. um, Sonoma has this thing when you're streaming. I think it seems to pop up this uh, window. I don't know if it's Simone, Sonoma or OBS, but um, when you're streaming, there's something that voiceover sees that actually what you want to do with the window if you want to just have it full screen or tallow or whatever. So that's that's just because we're streaming right now. Okay. So normally you can just hit escape and you'd still be in the focus right window. All right. So ignore that then. <laughs> so let's go ahead and view a red arrow from here. Inputs group. And we have our inputs container and this is inputs group. the only element in this page beyond that point. So let's go ahead and interact with these. Inputs group. Four items. Analog one. Line input. Select it. Group. These are all your analog inputs. So you have analog one. Analog two. Instrument input. Two, group. Analog three. Fixed line input. Group. Analog four. Fixed line input. Group. Three and four, which are you hear it says fixed line input. So you really, for three and four, you don't have any. You don't have any um, gain controls or anything like that because they are fixed. It's yep. meant for you to run your record player, your CD player, tape player, whatever, mixer, whatever machine, whatever you know, unit mixer. If you have like a like a guitar, like multi effects unit that you want to go out of its outputs into your inputs, you can run it into a line in on the back, you know, um, anything like that, you know. Yeah. Now, if, if you're just using like standard effects pedal, like a distortion pedal or something like that, you want to go through inputs one or two and set it to instrument. Um, but if you're going out of something that's like emulating like something like a full chain that's intended to go like direct to front of house or something like that, then you probably want to use them in the line inputs of three, four on the back of the unit. So that's like a keyboard, a synthesizer, drum machine, CD player, tape player, any of those things that, you know, would normally be plugged into a mixer. Even if you're using a mixer for like extra inputs, that will all go into uh, input three, four. So now if we go to input one. Analog one, line input, selected group. Analog one, I should say. In analog one, line input, selected group. Nine items, more options, pop up button. We have these controls here, so this one's more options. Menu, window, in channel options, window, link with analog two, link with analog two. And this is the only menu item in here. Link with analog two. So you can actually link these together and turn yep. them into a stereo pair. Yep. Window so sharing session button, button. If you want to make... Focus, focus, right, um, more options, pop up button. Sorry, if you want to make... Um, Analog one and two inputs one and two behave as like a stereo pair inputs. You can link analog one with uh, analog two and then control the gain and stuff like that with one set of controls. That way you don't have to sit there and try to match up the gain to be even with on, you know, be the exact same number on, on channel one and channel two. You just can control everything about those two inputs with one set of uh, controls. Now if we move to the right here. 50 decibels, free gain, vertical slider. All right, so that's just your gain uh, slider for your input. So whether you have um, it set to line or instrument or you're using it as a mic pre, um, it's going to adjust the input level for that particular channel. And this has a lot of gain on tap. It has like 70 dB of gain. So if you're using something like an SM7B or some kind of like low output dynamic microphone, you don't really need to worry about having like a cloud lifter or something of that nature with it. You can, um, you can, you got more than enough gain on tap here to, to handle that. And if you interact with that, you'll be able to adjust the gain level. In vertical slider. With microphone. 51 decibels, 50, 53 decibels, 54 decibels, 55 decibels. And 50, you should 50, probably 50, hear me getting a little bit louder um, as he turns this up. 66 decibels, 67 decibels. Yep. So, I'm just going to keep talking, and I'm probably clipping at this point, but, you know, that's the thing, it's adjusting the level. And go back up to, like, 55. 51 decibels, 54 decibels, 55 decibels. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just adjusting level. Now, the nice thing about this, as I said earlier, is um, if you turn the gain knob on the unit or press any of the buttons on the on unit, vertical slider. it will do... The same thing it will speak to values so i'm just going to reach over there and adjust the input gain for channel one and of course it doesn't do it when i'm trying to demo it 38 decibels pre gain 39 decibels 51 decibels 62 decibels 70 decibels 69 decibels 55 Ooh. decibels 49 48 decibels 49 decibels 58 decibels 67 decibels 61 decibels 53 decibels 52 decibels 53 decibels 56 57 decibels 56 decibels 54 decibels 55 decibels, 56 decibels. Jesus. 
Invert 55 decibels right. on a vertical slider. There we go. All right. So we we just got, I just turned the knob and moved it around and all that fun stuff. So, all right. So yeah, you can adjust your gain from here or you can use the knob. I like to come in here and adjust it because I like to leave mine sometimes set up in a way where it's not exactly reachable. It's not exactly right in front of me. Um, that way, um, I don't have to worry about wires running across my workspace and I can control pretty much all the features of the unit um, from inside of focus right control too. So if we go to the right here. Auto gain button. We have yep. an auto gain button. We have an auto gain, gain button. Auto gain button. And the auto gain button basically is gonna give you like probably five, 10 seconds and just listen to whatever is coming through the microphone or the line input or the instrument input and adjust your input gain to be appropriate for that. So it leaves you with about uh, minus 12 is around where it puts you on the meter. So it gives you about, you know, 12 dB of headroom, give or take, uh, so that you don't clip. And if you view it right, you'll see that you can see the meter as well. Minus 0.2 decibels button. Yep, and you see right now I'm at minus, uh, minus two. So you wanna go ahead and hit auto gain. Peak indicator, minus 13.2 decibels. Auto gain button. All right. Auto gain in progress, text. There we go. In case you can't hear him, it's his auto gain in progress, and he's just talking, so it can get good level for him. So anyway, I'm gonna keep auto gain successful. And it says, there we go. It says auto gain. Done. Button. Hit done here. Hit done. Forty-two and decibels. Green gain. Vertical slider. So now you see it sets us down to forty-two, and if we go over to auto gain button, peak indicator minus fourteen point nine decibels. Meter, see, it has me around minus fourteen point nine, and it peak gives me a little headroom, so I can decibels. get a little louder if needed. But you know. Um, that's definitely uh, giving me headroom there. And if go back up to the- Auto gain, button, 42 decibels, preamp gain, vertical slider. Preamp gain hasn't changed once the auto gain stuff uh, kicked in, but it uh, it definitely gives you a lot of headroom. This is useful when you're recording, just so it keeps you in a safe range because when you're recording, um, you don't want to clip necessarily. Um, so it just gives you a lot of headroom. It makes it really, really easy um, you know, if you need to sing or start playing or whatever, just come in here, do this, get it set up, and then you can get start recording and not have to worry about being in danger of clipping. And if you're too quiet, you can turn it up after the fact in the DAW using region gain. So you can turn it up to, to an appropriate level. And we have another thing in here that deals with uh, keeping you from clipping. If you want to be all right, again. Auto gain, button, peak indicator, minus 7.6 decibels, button. Let's clear the uh, peak indicator minus peak, yeah. peak indicator minus 21.0 decibels plus 48 feet off toggle button. By the way, if you view space on the clip or the peak indicator, it will clear it. Um, it works similar to how the ones in logic work, um, where it keeps updating uh, with the, the newest value. Um, go back to that for a second because I, I can't remember. Peak indicator minus 12.8 decibels button. And check it now. Uh, peak indicator minus 12.8 decibels button. And clear it. Yep. Peak indicator minus fifty eight point three. Peak, indi yeah. peak indicator minus so peak indicator minus one. Peak, peak indicator minus eleven point zero decibels. Where it just keeps updating what the latest value. So you have to clear it to see like the current value. Um, Unless you know you go over the current value. Yeah. If you go over the current value, like if I get louder right peak now, indicator, minus one point nine decibels. You see it p bumps up to the new value, but if you move off of it and back on, you see peak indicator minus one point nine decibels. Yeah, button. it doesn't drop back down, even though I'm speaking quieter. So you'd have to clear it again. Peak indicator minus peak indicator minus so peak, in, peak indicator minus 19 peak indicator minus 17.2 decibels there you go. peak indicator minus 17.1 decibels it's updating as i speak so you can see um that you can see that and how accessible that is the next peak indicator minus 14.3 decibels volt fountain power plus 48 feet off toggle button uh, and i'm using the dynamic mic so you don't need to worry about that and then keep going in off toggle button that's to set it to instrument mode or line mode it says ints off that means it's on line mode right now doesn't really matter we're using the XLR jack and not the quarter inch jack. That just switches what the quarter inch jack um, on that same input is looking for, whether it's looking for an instrument level like plugging in a guitar or bass or effects pedal like a distortion or overdrive or chorus or something like that directly into the unit, or if it wants line level like, you know, your CD player or you know, synthesizer or something of that nature. Save on, toggle button. All right, so that's clip save, and clip save is the other thing um, that it has built in to keep us from clipping. Um, so if you want to, um, that's on it's right now. On right, right now, yeah. Yeah, so if you view a space on it, it toggles off, on. Save, toggle off. button. So see, that's off, and then go ahead. On, save, toggle button. Back on. So now 
Um, if I get really loud, it will keep me from ever going over zero. It just pulls the level down to keep me from going over zero. Can <laughs> if you go back to the top there, I bet it would have said I more up 30 decibels, cream cane, vertical slider, auto plus 48 feet off, peak indicator, signal has clipped button. Yep, so you see, not only did it, it says signal a clip, but it actually kept me from clipping and it pulled my gain down to. Uh, minus 30. Well, go ahead and turn me back up to like 55. Auto, 30, more options. Pop up, pop, 30 decibel. Invert, 31 decibel. 4, 41 decibel. 50 decibel. 51 decibel. 52, 53, 54, 55 decibel. Yeah, there we go. So now um, you should be able to turn your uh, volume back down a little bit. <laughs> auto, auto gain, 55 decibel. Auto, peak indicator. Signal has clipped. Auto, so, auto gain, peak indicator. Minus let, peak indicator. Minus 2.7 decibel. Yep. So yeah. You know, peak for, for something like a decibels. live stream, you definitely probably need to be a little bit closer to zero. But when you're recording, because you have the ability to turn it up after the fact with region gain, something like the auto gain feature and the clip safe feature can come in handy for sure. All right, so let's go ahead and I think we covered most of it minus the air mode. Air presence on toggle button. So you've been listening to air mode this entire time. Off air so presence toggle turn button. Turn it off for a minute. And did it air. not say anything? Do what? Did it not say anything? No, it was on. Okay. Um, I, I turned it off. All right. So, yeah, this is with air mode off. And air mode essentially just brightens up the vocal or the microphone or whatever is plugged into the input. It could be line input, instrument input, doesn't matter. Air mode will work in all three. And it just adds some brightness to it, make it a little clearer. Um, and then presence and drive is the new version of air mode. So you have the original air mode that was on. On air presence toggle button. Which is this. Air mode yeah. toggle menu presence and drive. And presence and drive. Air presence and drive on toggle button. Yep. And then presence and drive is the new version, and that basically adds some saturation as well as the brightness on there. Um, air mode was originally on the Scarlet Gen Three. It's been on the Claret since the first generation. Um, but now it's, it's on the, uh, it's been on the Scarlet since Gen 3 and, um, now Gen 4, the Scarlet Gen 4 has a second, um, uh, mode. So you have two modes on the Scarlet's now. And so, yeah, I think that's everything in here, right? Yeah. And for the nerdy people, uh, the air mode basically emulates a, an ISA mic. Yeah. yeah, one of uh, Focus Rite's original mic pre-design. Um, it's it's a it's a coveted mic pre-design. They actually still sell standalone versions of the ISA mic pre as well. Um, and I believe one of the things you might get with this when you register is the um, Plugin Alliance Brainworks emulation of a uh, Focus Rite console that also uses those use those ISA preamps if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much everything in this one. And it is very nice. I mean, I'm kind of curious to hear how it sounds on the replay. But Try uh, control two. Um, from my having had the Claret and all that, um, I really like what it does to vocals and guitars and stuff like that it really does make a difference you know yep even yep. though it's little you know that subtle difference does it's go subtle but it's it's way, noticeable very, very yeah 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 so. and depending on what you're doing try it on try it in presence mode try it in presence and drive try it off you know um try it in all three modes because depending on what you're doing, it might work for some things. It might not work for some things. Like when I plug in a guitar and go for an amp sim, I do like the air mode on brightening up my DI signal before it hits the front of the amp. But, you know, I don't like presence and drive necessarily, um, depending on what I'm doing with the amp sim. And then off, you know, once you kind of get used to it on, stuff can sound a little dull. But if you're recording something bright or you're using like a condenser microphone that's already really, really bright, then the presence or presence and drive can kind of become maybe not what you want to use, you know? Um, so try, try it on different things and, and see what, what you think of it. And yeah, leave, leave a comment below and let us know what sort of stuff you like to use it on. So like case in point, I had two microphones. One was an active dynamic from blue the Encore 200, and then I had a Bluebird, um, which is a condenser. And oftentimes, I did not like air on the condenser. I mean, it, it 
made it shimmer, but air on the Encore was very, very nice. It did bring out more highs because, I mean, it's a, it's meant to be a live mic, um, but with that air, it really did um, help to bring out vocalist vocals and stuff that yeah. are produced here locally. So And the air mode is, the, the highs that it's bringing out is more kind of in the the intellig- intelligibility range of the voice. So that's why, like, if you're using, like, a dynamic mic that's not very bright, it might sound really great on vocals and can work on a tube mic, providing that the mic isn't already extremely bright in that in that same area. But it seems to be, like, right in that kind of sweet spot for intelligibility and clarity on a voice um, from what I seem to have noticed myself, you know, the air mode. Yeah, and it does add a little warmth as well, you know, which in the case of the dynamic, you know, does lend to going kind of thickens it up a little bit a long way yeah so yeah yeah, i was i was satisfied with it so i'm curious to hear with that how the um software how focus right have have uh have made it sound uh software wise because on the uh, original claret it's actually oh yeah it was part of the circuit i think and then on this i think it's like an emulation yeah so and the Scarlet, I think it's an emulation that they're doing um, yeah. digitally, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. general, generally, I've heard very, very good things about it. So, yeah. Anyway. All right. Analog one, line input, input, group. Uh, same controls in analog two, so I'm not going to bother going in there. Yep. But navigation bar, group. In the mixer, off, toggle button. And go into the mixer here. Mix navigation bar, group. And then automatically you get a mix navigation bar. In mix navigation bar, group. Three items. Mix A off. Toggle button. We have a mix A. Mix B on. Toggle button. Mix B. Mix C off. Toggle button. And mix C. Let's do mix A right mix, now. Mix A off. Yep. Toggle button. On. Mix A. Toggle and button. for the record, all three of them are always active. Um, when you have when you select a mixer, you can select whether you know the output of that mixer is going to like your headphones, output one, two, output three, four. Um, if you use say output one, two in mix A, then you can't use it in mix B or mix C by for, for example, um, you can enable it in mix B, but then it's going to disable it in mix A is, is my understanding. Um, but the nice thing about this is you're going to have in this window, um, your analog inputs, analog one, two, three, four, five, six, you didn't see five, six on the input side of this, just because five, six is generally usually your loop back, um, at least in the four I four. And if you have a two I two, then it'll probably be imp- analog input or just inputs three, four, uh, blah, 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 inputs five, six, basically. Uh, no, if you're on the two, I two, it'll be inputs three, four, but on the four, I four, it's inputs five, six, most likely. Um, so therefore that, you know, those are going to be like your loopbacks. So because those don't have any physical inputs on the unit, it didn't show up on the input side. But in here, you're going to have analog one, two, three, four, five, six, and then playback engine one, two, playback engine three, four, and playback engine five, six. And the playbacks are basically what shows up as the outputs, the software outputs in, say, Logic or whatever DAW you're using. And so the nice thing about these different mixers is you can set up uh, different mixes. The case in point, I have Logic routed to outputs three, four, and in mixer A, I'll have outputs one, two muted because that's going you know, to be like, you know, your Mac sounds, voiceover, things of that nature. And I have mixer A set to go to outputs one, two, which I have I my speakers part. plugged into. And I don't want voiceover and stuff like that on my studio monitors, on my speakers. But on mix B, which is set to go to my headphones, um, in that one, I do have one, two unmuted so that I can hear voiceover um in my headphones only so that kind of gives you an idea of how you can use it in a scenario like that um so yeah that's that's a brief overview oh by the way the other thing too is the analog inputs show up here or the inputs in general show up here because that's how you set up something like direct monitoring where let's say you know you don't want to use input monitoring logic you can come in here and then turn up the volume for input one or analog one so that you can hear it in your headphones. And that basically sends a signal that comes in the mic input directly to your, your headphones or speakers without it having to pass through logic. So I generally don't use direct monitoring, so I don't generally have that turned on. 
But um, if you're someone that wants you direct monitor and with this interface, that's how you'd go about setting it up. So let's go ahead and explore this. More options. Pop mix rootings group window here. Index rootings group two items. Outputs one two button. So this is uh, generally what where you pick what you're gonna set this to. So outputs one two three four headphones. And I'm sure this item has no help tag. Back, yep. This item has no help tag. Okay, never mind. I'm not sure anymore. View right. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna edit mix destinations button. Yep. So if you view space on that. And then do keep in mind, it sounds like it doesn't do anything, but it actually opened up a window here, so we have to uninteract. Auto mix rootings, group. And go to the right. Outputs one, outputs three, four, off. Headphones, mix B, loop back, loop back, off. Toggle, mix, headphones, outputs, outputs one, two, on. Toggle, exit modal dialog button. Outputs one, two, on. Toggle button. Yep, so you see outputs one, two's on. Outputs three, four, off. Toggle button. That's headphones off. off, toggle button. Headphones off. Mix B, text. Loop back, off, toggle button. And loop back is off as well. So... Right now, I'm only having mix A go directly to outputs one, two, and everything else is not being utilized inside of mix A. So any settings that we look at as far as like what levels, you know, the analog inputs or the playbacks are set to are unique to mixer A right now. And now if we go ahead and close this. Headphones, outputs three, four, off, outputs one, two, exit modal dialog button. Analog one, group. Now let's go to analog one. In analog one, group, four items, zero, pan, slider, minus 128 dB, level, vertical slider, mute, off, toggle button, solo, off, toggle button, solo, off, toggle, auto, analog one, group. Yeah, so you just basically have your input and a solo and mute for, for the inputs. Analog three, group, analog four, group, analog two, group, playback three, four, group. And then the playbacks, those are the outputs. In playback three, four, group, four items, zero, pan, slider, zero dB, level, vertical slider, mute, off, toggle button, solo, off, toggle button. So you see that's set to zero dB and it's not muted or soloed. And it's in the center. Yep. Auto playback three four group. Playback five six group. Playback one two group. In playback one two group. Four items zero pan slider zero dB level vertical mute on toggle button solo off toggle button. So you see this one is muted because I don't want voiceover and my Mac sounds and all that stuff to come out at the speakers if I'm trying to listen to something that's going on in Logic. So mixer. Um, I'll, uh, 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 Playback one two is muted, so that's that's how I have that set up for mixer A. So now if we go to mixer B and check out playback one two again. Auto playback one navigation bar group mix navigation in mix B off top on mix B auto mix navigation bar group playback one two group in playback one two group four items zero pan slot, minus twenty dB level vertical mute off toggle button solo off toggle button. Yep, you see playback one two. I have the volume turned down to minus twenty, and it's not muted or soloed. And the reason I do that is. Like I said earlier, I kind of, sometimes I like to keep the 4i4 like, you know, where it's not exactly easily reachable. Um, so what I do is I just turn the, the headphone volume knob up all the way and just leave it turned up all the way. And then I kind of use this playback one, too, as just sort of like a master volume where I just come in here and turn this down, turn this up because, you know, it's easy enough to set up a keyboard commander, keyboard commander to open focus right control and then I can just pop in here, adjust the level and close it, you know. Um, yes, I know some people might argue that it's just faster to reach over and adjust the knob, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not saying that isn't, but in my case, like I said, I got used to an interface prior to this that didn't have any physical controls and I got used to just having it set up in where it was convenient for the interface to be and not have any cables running across my desk or my workspace and being able to control it that way so um my i i kind of got used to that workflow so i kind of have the scarlet 4 i 4 set up in a similar manner where i it's not exactly convenient to reach over and turn a knob but i find that minus 20 is usually a good level where i'm not i don't need to constantly adjust my volume and other stuff you know i can turn their volume up or down or adjust my max system volume um, with VO plus and minus as well. And I'm using a piece of software that basically allows me to do that even with my audio interface and be able to control my audio interface volume that way. So there you go. Shout out to Rogue Amoeba and all their awesome apps like, you know, Sound Source and Loopback and all that stuff. So, yeah. So that's, um, that's pretty much it for this. Yep. Um, yeah. If you got any questions, because I'm not looking at YouTube right now, um, Go ahead and leave them in the uh, comments below. 
um, and we'll definitely um, jump in there and answer them when I can. And or, you know, if you're a member and you make it to the next Kune, we can talk about this some more there, too. Um, I'm going to try to get facts and logic going again. So the, uh, the regular Q&A, you know, show that I did on the channel. I'm going to try to bring that back at some point as well and hopefully not too distant future. But yeah, there is a join button uh, somewhere on this page or in the comments area. If you want to become a Logic Band member, hit that join button join us. I'm in the process of um, uploading a lot of content to the members area, uh, the memberships area on YouTube right now. So that's going to be hopefully in the next month or so is going to be loaded with content. Um, so if you're not a Logic Band member yet, then just hit that join button and join us. You can attend the Q and A's. You can get some member exclusive tutorial. In fact, there's a tutorial about how not to clip when recording that talks about how you can use region gain or the gain control inside of logic to get your levels right and not have to worry about that. But this interface kind of takes care of a lot of that for you if you use the auto gain feature as well. So two different ways to do it. But yeah, if you like live streams like this, let me know in the comments below. We're going to try to do some more stuff like this in the future as well. That's it for this one. Um, yeah, I hope everybody has a great night out there. Any parting words of the G? No, not really. Just happy recording as usual. Happy recording. On solo toggle button. Menu off toggle button. Solo on toggle button. Menu bar Apple. Yeah. Apple closing menu solo on toggle button. Off solo toggle Let's button. Turn that off. Obs. OBS auto stop. No action available. Check check stop streaming. Check checkbox.